In a world of pregnant men, knee-taking millionaire footballers and gardening his racist op-eds in The Guardian, writing the jokes and owning the lips has never been easier for right-of-centre journalists, comics and critics. But what effect does it actually have? In the areas that matter, the progressive agenda wins again and again and again. Left-wing indoctrination continues unabated in schools, institutions set up to preserve our heritage are committed to dismantling it. The Royal Air Force doesn't want to recruit white men. Private companies are held hostage to HR departments intent on ideological social engineering. And don't even get me started on the civil service or the police farce. The left liberal programme, despite being more absurd than ever, is at the height of its power. But why is that? The answer is simple. The new Labour government made sure that diversity and inclusion ideology was enshrined into law and that millions of taxpayers' money would be pumped into its promotion every single year. Today, whether you're a policymaker, teacher, business leader or wage slave, if you attempt to defy the diktats of your enemies, the law will not take your side. Some years ago, the great Theodore Dalrymple made the, this comparison between the propaganda of communist societies and the then burgeoning vernacular of political correctness in Britain. The purpose of communist propaganda was not to persuade or convince, not to inform but to humiliate, and therefore, the less it corresponded to reality, the better. Sound familiar, anyone? To assent to obvious lies, one standing to resist anything is thus eroded and even destroyed. A society of emasculated liars is easy to control. I think if you examine political correctness, it has the same effect and intended to do so. Yes, exactly that. Was he not correct? When backed by law, the less sense wokery makes, the more effective it seems to be. How many of you out there need to keep silent or even keep repeating the dogmas themselves to keep hold of your jobs. You'll get sacked if you don't toe the line. Does that not over time erode your pride and your will to pipe up? One particularly egregious piece of legislation is the Equality Act 2010. I mean, it's barely legislation, actually. It's a surrender document. It keeps progressives as the ascendant class, regardless of who wins the debate on any particular issue. Well, our very own Charlie Peters took it to absolute pieces in a great article in The Critic this morning. And I'm very pleased to say that Charlie joins me now. Charlie. What's the crack? Well, here's the thing. I mean, on this channel and many other excellent anti-progressive, anti-woke areas of our broadcasting and journalism, people often, you know, have a go at these, these woke ideologies and extreme progressive politics. And it's very easy to do so because they come up with nonsense all the time. And as mm. you said in your monologue, the police farce and the RAF saying that you can't hire white men. Mm. But we never spend enough time, at least I think, really diving into why these things exist. Why do people make these arguments? Why do they get away with it? And what's the cause of these issues? Now, I've always thought that um, the politics that we have is um, creating institutions and legislation that informs this very, very progressive and woke culture. And one of these um, areas of legislation is the Equality Act, as you just mentioned. Now, it, it legislates, it puts into law as of mm. 2010, these so-called protected characteristics, which is essentially the, the identity politics that we all rail against. Well, well, can I ask, what are some of these protected characteristics? Oh, it's, it's race, religion, sexual preference, political belief in some cases. I mean, it's such a farce. We've had situations where vegans have been fighting nudists to see who can be the protected class in a certain dispute. It's, it's, it, it descends politics into Is that the, the warm-up fight for Fury Wilder <laughs> 4? Because I'd actually watch that. We've got vegan versus nudist. It sounds like something that I would have done back in the day as a tabloid journalist, actually. I would have loved to have done that. Mm. But how protected a species is the straight white man? Well, here's the thing. I mean, everyone gets very upset all the time, as they should, in, in our channel and others, when we hear that the BBC... Um, or other areas of the public sector, such as the NHS, have job adverts oh, that ban white men. They say you need not apply for a white man. People get very distressed by this. They say it's racist and they say that it you know, goes against the Equality Act. But actually, the Equality Act makes it acceptable to do this. It makes it acceptable to say that anything other than straight white men is great. Mm. And if you are a straight white man, you need not apply. So, I mean, people say this is racist, you've got to get rid of it. But, you know, it clearly is allowed in the law. Proper dictatorships usually use children to emphasise their point, and I can't help but wonder whether or not we're doing it now. There was a Channel 4 clip that re-emerged of a mixed-race group of children used to demonstrate white privilege, and they were literally shamelessly exploiting young kids, too young to know what, what on earth they were being a part of, actually, and very selectively editing it to make it out to realise that, actually, white kids didn't realise how good they had it. Sure. Is it just being pumped into kids' brains from a young age that if you happen to have any kind of 
quote unquote privilege in your life and you are white that you need to re-educate yourself and apologize for yeah, it i mean it absolutely is i i remember that clip we're talking about as well it was, it was really quite disgusting to view but the reason why so many of uh these speeches and these incidents happened is because after 12 years of conservative rule let's not forget the conservative party is at least performatively anti-woke as a, a common sense group of MPs who hate wokeness. And yet, after 12 years, the government is still spending tens of millions of pounds on diversity and inclusion and equality, mm. um, uh, you know, programmes. So there's loads of money creating these enemies that they, yeah. they rile against in the media, but they're funding them in the first place. But can someone explain to me what is progressive mm. about the idea that male rapists who decide to identify as women can mm. enter a woman's space even when they are on bail for rape? That, apparently, is progress. Well, I mean, it's obscene stuff. I mean, the, the arguments they make kind of go against themselves in the first place. They don't make any logical sense. But the wildness of it is that while we can, we can attack these arguments all the time, we can, we can lambast them as we do in the media, as our politicians do, as fellow journalists do, mm. we're not going to win so long as laws that defend these people mm. and money that keeps them employed is still flowing into their pockets. So something needs to happen, clearly. Have any politicians particularly spoken against this legislation? Oh, this, Kemi Badenox, I think, is a pretty fantastic MP who came out this year, ran for the Tory party, and she was, she's got a very kind of structural and legalistic assessment when it comes to dealing with wokeness, and hopefully she'll develop more oh. of, a, of an, an agenda in that space. There are some Tories who seem to get it, there are some Labourites indeed who get it, but generally speaking, you know, we've got hundreds of MPs and they're very keen for this to continue. Do you think that we will one day in this country live in a world where there are law firms dedicated to anti-white racism? Well, in the workplace and in schools sure. and wherever. Well, in a sense, we kind of already do have that. We have, a, we have a huge diversity and equalities industry, which is worth, you know, hundreds of millions of pounds for all of these training events, which has skyrocketed since mm. the events involving, you know, George Floyd in 2020. These things, these things are really on the rise. And we complain a lot about council culture on this channel, which I think is oh. great. You know, we really fight back against that censoriousness. But there isn't enough space, I think, dedicated to asking, why does cancel culture exist in the law? Well, we have Section 127 of the Communications Act of 2003, mm. which defines grossly offensive speech as illegal. And so today there was a case where a police officer had scalding hot water thrown in his face and the perpetrator was given a two-year suspended sentence mm. and a fine. But a few months ago, I can remember a case where some police officers were sent to jail for sharing jokes on WhatsApp. Mm. So why do we have cancel culture? Well, it's on the law. Yeah, I, I understand what you're saying there. A lot of people, look, would find that what the police officers did absolutely abhorrent, but they'd also find the other element of it mm. equally abhorrent as well. And I think there is the case for it. Has the Equality Act actually done anything, or other legislation actually done anything, to make us a more harmonious, less racist society? Because if it has done, then some people would say, well, that's good. So just things like, for example, Charlie, the idea of affirmative action, positive mm. discrimination, whatever you want to call it in the workplace, even if... That has actually resulted in someone who otherwise would have been victim to, you know, boardroom racism, mm -hmm. getting a job. Surely that's, that's a good thing, no? Mm -hmm. Well, you know, I often find that with these agendas, they, they generally don't create harmoniousness among differences. They make people look at our differences more than what unites us. And by focusing so much on identity, mm. you blind yourself from the common humanity. That binds us all. Do you think we're too pigeonholed? I mean, I think the world's an incredibly confusing place for kids. Mm. No, absolutely. I mean, for sure. I mean, what, we're putting adult children onto uh, adult children, putting adult problems onto mm. onto children yeah. all too often, and you know, it blinds us from the common humanity that we all need to cherish. Yeah, absolutely. Look, Charlie, thank you very, very much. Charlie Peters, there, our very own. Oh, and a little cheeky little plug for something that you've got coming up. I know I hammer it a bit when I cover for Mark Stein on this show. Mark Stein himself is a passionate mm. advocate of the kind of work that you do. Just talk us through what GB News viewers and listeners can expect from you in the coming months. Well, in my role at GB News, I've been covering the grooming gang scandal nationally. We have a film coming out in January. I hope the second week of January it'll be broadcast live on GB News. We've had some great success recently with our reporting. The Labour Party candidate for Rother Valley has stood down after a GB News You've already got a scalp. One scalp to go, but several to come. Good stuff. Charlie, thank you very much. As ever, Charlie Peters there, our very own, very lucky to have him.